Hello there! So, previously on Impractical Shrine Solutions was Tho Kayu. And long story short, I did a whole bunch of stuff in order to light the torches in the desert with blue fire, wielding the Fire Dweller sword from the test of wood, and all of this during the torch minigame at Akala Stable. Being an Impractical Shrine Solution, I wanted to stick to the normal editing of music plus the solution. Needless to say, the end result was a whole lot of confusion. So, I wanted to clear up some of that confusion and explain what the f*** just happened. I started out by setting the travel medallion next to the gambling minigame to have quick access to this minigame. I then got moon jumps using a Lynel because peasants and all that, and then completed the wrong warp setup by warping to the travel medallion. Oh right, all of that was to set up a wrong warp. Probably should have told you that. During this torch minigame, you have a total of three minutes to bring blue fire and light this torch which is not nearly enough time to go to the test of wood, go to the desert, and get back here. The obvious choice from here was to unload portions of the minigame so that the timer would stop, similar to how I achieved a sub one second time in the foot race minigame, I'll link that video at the end of this video, for anybody who might be interested. I started the torch minigame and drowned myself, which ultimately resulted in a wrong warp, which put me at my desired location of the gambling minigame. While you're in a minigame, you cannot talk to NPCs other than the NPC who started it. But, you can do things like interact with chests. And, it just so happens, this particular minigame can be started by interacting with his chests. I know what I said. I play through the entire minigame, because at the end of minigames, the game restores your ability to fast travel and save, because you weren't supposed to be able to do either of those things during the minigame. While saving won't do any good here, because if I save and reload, it'll just completely unload this minigame, because it doesn't persist through saves unlike some, like the gut check challenge. But the other side of that coin is fast travel, and that is why we're here. Fast traveling unloads all of the current active actors, and moves Link to the new location, loads up that section of the map. And one of those active actors and I don't want to talk about how many takes it just took me to say the words active actors. Anywho, one of those actors keeps track of the minigame, and because it unloaded, the timer stopped. But, because the minigame is still technically active, we still can't talk to NPCs and whatnot. But... Test of Wood, much like the gambling minigame, can be started without talking to the NPC. From here, it was just a matter of escaping Test of Wood, which is actually very easy to do, wrong warping back to the House of Gamble, gambling, and then getting my ability to travel again because it was taken away when I started Test of Wood. With everything in hand and everything set up, it's just a matter of getting the fire to the desert. Luckily, with weapon smuggling, we can very easily just hold a torch in our hand and proceed to run as fast as we can to get to the desert. You can hoof it by a horse, you could walk if for some reason you're insane, or you can take my method and wind bomb there because it's the fastest method and that's why I chose it. Because at any point, if it rains, even just a little bit, the fire goes out. Now, I did only show the successful attempt in the video, but it did take quite a few attempts to make it all the way to the desert without being interrupted by a little bit of rain. Upon arriving at the desert, I proceeded to drop the torch on the ground so I'd be able to light the Forest Dweller Sword on fire with blue fire. Once all the torches are lit, the shrine appears, but we can't actually enter the shrine. Remember earlier when I said we can't talk to NPCs? Well, we also can't open shrines, because you're not supposed to be able to enter shrines either during minigames. And we've currently got two of them running. So I headed back to finish up the test of wood, which I failed immediately because I equipped a torch earlier. And then all that was left was to grab some blue fire and light the torch. And even though we were gone for quite literally days, she is very impressed with our speed and gives me money. And with both mini games done and away with, I was able to open up the shrine. Finally, a couple of quick updates. So as for the Impractical Shrine Solutions, I'm almost done recording all of the puzzles, meaning all that are left are Blessing Shrines. And, fun fact, as you've seen, those are ridiculous. So, they're only gonna get weirder from here. Also, an update on the Q&A Shrine or the Twin Memory Shrines, that is still ongoing. I have completed the shrines themselves and they are recorded. It took about, eh, 
about 10 hours to brute force two puzzles that have around 3,125 possibilities each? I'd say I'd make good time. The current plan for those two shrines is they will be shrine numbers 60 and 61, or 67 and 68. So if you got some questions for me, head over to the Q&A video and put your questions in the comments. And if you don't see the Q&A video, that's because it's over. I'm going to take that video down once it's over. And until next time, see you a good later.